once again and welcome to Leading Edge. I'm Jeff Smith. Thank you so much for spending part of your day with us. The team here always appreciates it. I want to throw out some words at you today. Let's take a look at this list. Physical, sexual, psychological, neglectful, financial. You know what all these words have to do with one another? They describe elder abuse and the many forms that it can take, physical, sexual, psychological, neglectful, financial exploitation, and one we didn't mention is self-neglect. We're going to get into that a little bit more in just a moment. And coming up on June 15th, it is World Elder Abuse Awareness Day. What is it? Why do we have it? Why do we need it? Let's bring in my guest here with us this morning, Christopher Jones. He is with Adult Protective Services with Lucas County Job and Family Services. Thank you for being here, Chris. And also Paula Burney. She is with Arista Home Care Solutions. Good to see both of you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us on. Thank you. I, I, I want this to be an educated moment for our audience and, and also for myself, trying to understand, like I said, Chris, why do we talk about it? Why do we need it? Why is your job so darned important? Well, Let's start there. Yeah. Uh, some statistics show us that uh, about one in every 10 uh, seniors are abused. And so that's this upwards of uh, 5 million uh, seniors annually um, that go through some kind of abuse. And of those only, they estimate about one in 24 cases are actually reported. Mm -hmm. So there are many seniors out there that are going through uh, different kinds of abuse. Um, like you said, um, Neglect, self-neglect, uh, physical, sexual, emotional, verbal, and financial exploitation, and they're just going through the abuse. Nobody's reporting it. And fortunately, in Ohio, we have people that are mandated reporters that have to reach out if they do notice any kind of abuse to a senior. We're going to share that phone number with people in our second segment, once again, if they want to make a call. But when, when, when you're talking about these issues that exist and immediately comes to mind, uh, you know, being taken advantage of, but it, it goes way beyond just that. It goes way beyond a senior citizen being scammed, right? right? Right. Um, we have, so in the cases of neglect, if we have caregivers, um, those caregivers um, sometimes are not providing for the senior the way they're supposed to. If they're bed bound, they're not providing food and water, uh, medication the way they should be. Uh, in the cases of self-neglect, someone could be uh, lower income and can't provide for all of their needs or possibly uh, refusing medical treatment mm. that could be helping them and so we could be a resource for them to explain why certain things are needed and um, help them to refer them to any other sources um, in order to um, get that issue resolved yeah. for them. Um, and then the final expo financial exploitation, I'm sorry, um, like you said, that's a really big one. Um, there's estimates with that that there's uh, up to about $36 billion of financial exploitation that goes on yearly and that's costly on the multiple systems that interact with um, the seniors and elder abuse. Help us understand what happens when, when you talk about financial exploitation. I think about, once again, I'm going to go back to being taken advantage of, but I, I think about is that relatable to family? Is that relatable to outside sources? Well, sometimes it's family. Uh, other times it's outside sources. There could be uh, a professional that's actually working with them, like uh, a home health aide or some other caregiver. But then other times it is family that is, you know, they're working on that senior's good nature. Mm. Hey, I, I have this situation going on. Can you help me out? And once they work, you know, soften them up, um, for the abuse that they're intending to do with the senior, um, then they can start extracting the bank account information, debit cards, and um, pulling that money from them. And sometimes the senior has no idea until it's too late yeah. and they find out, hey, my, my mortgage has not been paid, mm. um, the apartment has not been paid, and now they're getting an eviction notice or their lights are being shut off and they had no idea. Paul, I'm seeing, I feel like you're going through a checklist of this is my daily life. I understand sure. exactly what he's talking about right here. When, when you're listening to all this, and I, I guess bring our viewers up to speed and our listeners as well. This, by the way, Leading Edge is a podcast as well. Br bring them all up to speed on where you come into this, your, your daily dose of dealing with this, seeing this, watching out for this. 
Sure. Well, I'm the owner of Arista Home Care, so we provide in-home care services for the elderly um, and the disabled throughout uh, Lucas County. And unfortunately, we encounter examples of what Chris was describing uh, way too often. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know it before you ever step foot inside a, an apartment, a house, anything along those lines, or is it just you respond and you see this is going on? Well, with our caregivers and nurses in the home, they'll report back to us on some of the things that they're noticing, like a senior maybe complaining that there's not enough money in their checking account and they're unable, you know, they're bouncing checks. Mm -hmm. So we get that reported to us from our frontline workers who are in the home on a daily basis. What do you tell them as far as, I guess, you don't want them to be skeptical of, obviously you get a little advanced in years and maybe you're not as aware, you're not paying as much attention, but what do you tell your caregivers when they go in there? And as far as their checks and balances to make sure that if, if one of our clients, uh, if you call them clients, what, if one of our clients says, I think this may be going on, how, how many T's are they crossing? How many I's are they dotting? So that's, that's um, something that we talk about um, in orientation. We talk about uh, what Chris just explained, yeah. the different types of abuse and how they can deal with it. But um, primarily they're gonna report it back to us. We would never want a caregiver to confront an abuser, um, but they report it to us and as mandatory reporters, I would then call Chris. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But, mm -hmm. but it is one of those things as far as being aware and, and you know this is reality. This is what we deal with. This, this could happen here in Lucas County. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And does. Yes. yes. I, I was asking you before we came out, I'm, I'm like, what, what's high, what's low as far as numbers are concerned? So we can kind of wrap our minds around how, how often this happens. Because as I said to Paula when we were walking in this evening, I said, and, and we're taping here on Wednesday evening, I, I said, I don't think many people, this doesn't resonate. This isn't a top of mind issue for a lot of people uh, every single day. So for me to hear this and think, well, okay, we're going to dive into this issue, it, it's, it's kind of shocking. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, last year, I wouldn't say with the number of actual referrals that we received was probably over 1,800 referrals last year in 2022. Um, just in Lucas County alone. Just in Lucas County. Mm -hmm. um, there are numbers in a, a system that the, the state uses, but um, in that, I want to say that was upwards of maybe 30,000, 40,000 yeah. uh, statewide. But um, here in Lucas County, we're almost 2,000 referrals. And take into account, like I said, uh, one of every 24 cases is reported. So there's a lot wow. more going on, but that's only the part that's coming in that we're seeing. And then on top of that, um, that senior has the right to make a choice when we come out and interact with them. Right. If they have the capacity to make a decision for themselves, mm. they have the right to make that poor decision. We sometimes will uh, you know, try to inform them yeah. what other options are out there for them, but at the end of the day, they, they'll have that right to make that decision. Now, if someone does not have capacity, then at that point, that's when we may be looking at the family, friends, or maybe uh, asking an attorney if they would like to be a legal guardian for that individual. You guys are stepping in. I'll tell you what, I want to talk more about COPE. Mm -hmm. We're going to learn about that, the uh, joint partnership that exists to address this issue, as well as talk a little bit more about that self-neglect issue, another form of that adult elder abuse. Stay with us. We've got more to come right, at, right after this. Welcome back. Christopher Jones and Paula Bernie joining us. And Paula, I apologize. It's Arista, Arista. Home, so home Care Solutions. We wanted to get that correct. <laughs> we want to talk more about June 15th and why that is such a big day coming up and also the efforts of CORE. G dive into that for us. Sure. So um, uh, June 15th is World Elder Abuse Awareness Day mm -hmm. and it's commemorated every year. And um, during that time, uh, like the month of June, um, private citizens, seniors, government organizations um, will all um, get together um, in, in a consolidated effort to help prevent and get the word out about elder abuse. Yeah, a number of things happening during the course of that. You guys are going out, you're visiting, Yeah, right? yeah, we're really excited. So um, uh, members of COPE are visiting six um, different area senior centers, mm -hmm. uh, some at 10 in the morning, some at noon, um, some at three, and we're giving um, a presentation um, that Chris made for us uh, that talks about elder abuse and the role of APS 
and will instruct seniors and their families on how to report uh, suspected abuse. COPE, bring us up to speed on what COPE is all about. Sure, so um, COPE is the uh, Coalition of Organizations Protecting Elders, and it is a group of over 70 um, community organizations in Lucas County, wow. um, and we, um, we help each other, um, we offer suggestions and resources um, to help, uh, again, to help prevent and um, elder abuse. Yeah. Um, and this includes... There's like an alert system throughout all of these. You guys work in conjunction. I don't mean that in the essence of 911 or anything, right. but, but there is a system of connectivity mm -hmm. as far as communication is concerned. When one organization, as I understand it, sees, hears, learns of a problem, they reach out to another member of COPE and right. say, we think you would be best suited to handle this. Is sure. that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. So we meet monthly. Mm -hmm. um, we're back to in-person meetings, which is exciting. Um, Toledo um, Police and Fire, Sylvania um, Township Fire, right. um, Lucas County Prosecutor's Office, the Probate Office, um, Area Office on Aging, Lucas County Department of Developmental Disabilities, um, and, and then, 65 others, right? And, right, right. Yeah. Home care agencies yeah. and um, uh, skilled facilities, and we all meet and we talk about what's going on in the elder community, whether it's presentations or concerns that we have. Mm -hmm. And then if an individual has um, a particularly troubling case, um, you can put it out to the group and people will offer suggestions. Um, for example, uh, maybe the uh, prosecutor's office is working with probate and APS, mm -hmm. and then we might use one of our elder law attorneys um, to help with the legal uh, resources. We've got a couple of minutes left, Christopher. I wanted to ask about, uh, we talked about self-neglect. What, what exactly is that all about as far as our individuals who were trying to make sure that their lives mm -hmm. are good, but self-neglect comes in and, as one of those forms? Right. And for us, I, I, I probably should have said this in, this in the first half, for adult protective services in Ohio, an adult for us is those, those people that are 60 years of age or older gotcha. that live in the community and not in the facility. So if we get a, a, a referral that says, for instance, uh, there is someone that's living in a hoarded environment or um, their utilities are not, not being paid, yeah. um, they're not taking the recommendations of their doctors, and uh, or maybe even that individual that is wandering around the neighborhood mm -hmm. because they really don't know what home is theirs uh, because they they are maybe in a middle or advanced stage of dementia sure. and those types of things um, some people they don't, don't know how to handle and maybe there's no family that's involved with them so if uh, if those types of things become you know, uh, the community becomes aware of those or home health care agencies or anybody, um, they can contact uh, Adult Protective Services to go out and investigate. And so when we go out, we'll, um, you know, see the s smells that are there, um, see if there's any um, rodents, yeah. um, mice, um, bed bugs, roaches, anything like that in the home. So we, we see and smell a lot of different things yeah. that are not appealing it's part of the job but it's yeah. part right. of the job right mm -hmm. so but at the end of the day we want to try to help that se senior uh, live, live a, a better safe life. and dignified life right absolutely um, we want to we want to share a phone number with folks there at home once again if any of this is ringing a bell in your head and you think maybe even maybe even a neighbor who you're worried about or concerned about the number right there at the bottom of the screen 419-213-8663 pretty easy process when they call Right. Yeah. And, and if it, the person is not in Lucas County, the uh, state of Ohio's uh, APS hotline number is 855-OHIO-APS. And that's 855-644-6277. Easy enough to remember. Chris, mm -hmm. Paula, thank you so much. Uh, obviously you, insightful and bringing people aware of this issue. Stay right there. When we come back, we talk about Flag City Honor Flight getting ready to take off on another trip to our nation's capital right after this. Welcome back. We appreciate, as always, you spending some time with us. Going to switch gears a little bit, talk about something that's upcoming this week. Another huge trip for Flag City Honor Flight. Every single one of them is big. Steve Schultz and Dan Cummins, ambassador for Flag City Honor Flight, joining us. And, of course, a friend of WTOL and Fox 36 viewers. Guys, thanks for being here to talk sure. about this next trip. Does it ever get old? It, it doesn't for me. Yeah. It's just it's always so exciting. Uh, the, the veterans are just 
so pumped up about these trips. Uh, I, I can't tell you how many times I've heard guardians call me and say, I just called my veteran and I can't even tell you how over the moon they are about going on this trip. What, so. what, what convinced you, I want to be a part of this? Well, actually, the, the firm I was with at the time before I retired, we were involved with Flag City Honor okay. Flight and did a lot of fundraising for them and everything. And I went on a trip as a guardian about five years ago. Uh, my father-in-law was actually on that same trip. He was a Korean War veteran. And I saw what that whole trip meant to him and what a cool experience it yeah. was. And so that's why I decided when I retired, I said I want to get involved with this a little bit more. And Dan has brought us stories from these trips that have been just amazing to watch, to hear, to, to witness. But talk to me a little bit about just the sheer emotion that not only obviously from him and family, uh, one of our veterans, but mm -hmm. from understanding each of these families that is on that trip, they're experiencing something different. Every single family, right? A absolutely. And, and, and the one thing I think is really neat is when you see, especially the Vietnam veterans at the Vietnam Wall, it's, it's a very emotional experience for them. And a lot of them are looking for buddies of theirs that are on the wall. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, you've, you've probably seen many pictures with the people with their hand up on, on the person's name and, yeah. and it's just very emotional. And, and you know, this next flight we have is an all Vietnam flight. And I've many times said that the welcome home celebration that we have, I think it means a little more to the Vietnam guys because they didn't get yeah. that uh, the last time. Dan, each of the theaters that we represent each and every time you go, I mean, is there one that stands out to you, whether it be like he said, people standing at the Viet, the vets standing at the Vietnam Wall, or or being there, Iwo Jimo, you, you name it. I know we've, we've talked for years about the different experiences, the, the, the fact that they came home, many of them came home and didn't get the celebration they deserved. Well, think about uh, the first, uh, is when you, they arrived in Baltimore there is a little bit of a ceremony they have volunteers that are in Baltimore's airport and they stand there ringing the bell and welcoming everybody one by one and once in a while we get other this is right when they right. get off the plane coming off yeah. the plane Jeff and then the whole day and sometimes when we arrive when the bus stops at the World War II Memorial there may be school kids there it's neat to see these generations of kids being exposed to this and learning hey these are heroes these are veterans that that you know put their life on the line for their country and and it's neat the next generations are are, are learning that as well What's neat for me is that on this flight, this will be my 12th one coming I was just up, gonna ask. going back to 2017, and there are 85 veterans on that plane, and there are 85 great stories. Mm -hmm. every, that's why every time I do it, it doesn't get old, and it stays fresh for me because of uh, the passion I have for telling their stories. But every one of them is just special people, and their story is unique, and they, they open up and talk to me. Last year, I was just looking up the, I have a picture in my phone of this, this fella, 100 years old, Frank Chapman from Montpelier originally, he was a, a farm boy. Mm -hmm. He learned to fly aircraft uh, uh, flying on the farm as they were dusting the farm. And when World War II broke out, he volunteered to fly. He wound up in the Pacific. Now you've got to have, you've got to be pretty Kahunas. special to fly. <laughs> he flew at Guadalcanal early in the yeah. war and he survived. Just a crop duster. This guy, Frank Chapman, and when I first, yeah. I, I want to meet this guy, and his grandson is his guardian for the day, and he goes, you know, Grandpa, he's not much for talking. I couldn't shut him up. <laughs> Once I asked him a couple of questions, he just kept going on, and he, he, just, just a brilliant interview. Very, very nice to meet people like that. Yeah. We're going to talk a little bit about the lineup coming up for this trip specifically. When we come back, stay with us. We've got more to come on this edition of Leading Edge right after this. Welcome back. Flag City Honor Flight taking off in just a few days. Dan Cummins taking his 12th trip. And Steve, I, I wanted to just ask specifically one moment that really stands out for you. But, but also, I think everybody thinks these trips are sad at, at moments. But there's, there's lifted spirits, right? There absolutely is lifted spirits. And, and you know, one of the things that's, that's neat is the camaraderie all these guys and ladies have, you know, as, as they're on this trip. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, that's, that's the fun thing to me is seeing, seeing a lot of them. Obviously the different services bannering back and forth with, with each other, but- uh, Ribbing but, each other. Uh, Ribbing each other just a little bit, yeah. yeah Apparently so, the Air think. Force is soft. <laughs> that is, that's, that's what, that's what hear, you huh? hear, that's what you hear. Right. Dan, you, you made a comment when we went to break and you said each of these monuments has a different representation for each. You're, you talked about the Vietnam being personal. 
Vietnam Wall is personal. It, it, it was uh, so well conceived. I know it was a controversial long process of deciding what to do and where to put it. Mm -hmm. But look at that. I mean, uh, it, it draws all of these Vietnam veterans to the wall. You said World War II was majestic. World War II, it's, it's, it's all stone, it's surrounded, it's got beautiful water fountains, mm -hmm. and, and there's a lot of space to walk around in and look at, and all the states are represented, yeah. and uh, Pacific and the Atlantic side, and they have some just incredibly, some quotes from, from uh, different people, uh, of course, uh, Roosevelt, yeah. but then you go to Vietnam and like, for, for you to go there and like, you're looking, you, you, there's a directory, you can look up an online a directory and then you go looking for the panel and looking Steve, for the name of the guy you know. Steve, we've got about one minute. We've, mm -hmm. got a, we've got something to say to Dan, don't we? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Thank you, Jeff. Well, as you can tell, Dan hasn't just been someone who's reported on our flights. He's gone on our flights. He's helped us get veterans. He's helped us fundraise for, mm -hmm. for all of these events. So, Dan, on behalf of the board of Flight City Honor Flight, we want to present you with our Above and Beyond Re Award. It is, uh, as, it, as it very succinctly says, for your dedication and exemplary service to Flag City Honor Flight and our nation's veterans. So, thank you very much for everything you've done for our organization and for our veterans. You both know me very well, and for once I'm speechless. Yeah. <laughs> this, the, thank you. I, I, uh, my, I'm grateful to the board for thinking of me. and. I love you guys as much as you love us. You guys are Thank taking you. off when? We are taking off, uh, well, 6.30 is when we start boarding on Tuesday. Uh, right. Hopefully the, hopefully it'll be on uh, We will be there. We will cover it. Dan, Great. thank you so much. Thank you. Great. Great. We'll see you next time on Leading Edge.